calculate the coordinates of m the x-intercept of p m let's go ahead and take a look at what is happening there we land so in the diagram below p q and r are vertices of triangle p q r as you can clearly see from the diagram below mm -hmm. m is the midpoint of q r m is the midpoint of q r so it means that from m to q is equals to well the distance is equals to uh, that of m r uh, there we go and then uh, n is a point on pm in the second quadrant we can clearly see that it's right here the equation of qr is given by 2y minus 3x plus sine is equals to zero the angle of inclination of qr is theta what are we looking for calculate the coordinates of m the x intercept of pm so we're looking for the x coordinate of m which is the x intercept of pm okay do we have the equation of uh, to pm because if we have the equation of pm then we are almost done um we don't have the equation of pm but we have the equation of qr right which is 2y minus 3x plus 9 and m is the midpoint of qr so m lies on pm and it also lies on qr so we can use the equation of qr to find the coordinates of m so the equation of qr we have 2y minus 3x plus 9 being equals to 0. So we can make y the subject of the formula, even though it's not really necessary. We'll get 2y being equals to 3x minus 9. So y is equals to 3 over 2x minus 9 over 2. So m is the x intercept. So x intercept we know fully well that y is equals to zero. So zero is equals to two over three, well, three over two, not two over three. Three over two x minus nine over two. So three over two x is equals to nine over two. So we get x being equals to nine over two multiplied by two over three. That is the same as I divide in by 3 over 2. So x is equals to 9 multiplied by 2, that is 18. So we have 18 divided by 6. So 6 to 18. x is equals to 3. So the coordinates of m, x is 3, and y is 0. So there we go. That is 3.1. But let's just uh, carry this with us, what we did here when we made y the subject of the formula because I'm thinking we're going to need that at some point of time as we progress with equations. But that is 3.1. 3.2, determine the equation of PM in the form y is equals to mx plus c. We are looking for the equation of PM. Okay, so let's go back to the information that we have with regards to PM. It's, uh, well, we know the coordinates of M, right? which is 3 and 0. We also have the coordinates of P, which lies on PM, obviously. P is minus 9 and 12. So we can obviously use these two points to find the gradient. After finding the gradient, we can substitute one of the two points to find the equation. So there we go. Uh, let's do that. M, what am I doing? The gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 for the faint-hearted ones. So y2, let's take p as point 2. So this would be x2, y2, x1, y1. So y2 is 12 minus y1, which is 0, divided by x2 minus 9, minus x1, which is 3. So it should be easy to see that this is minus 1. So we get y is equals to minus, well, minus x plus c. I was about to say minus 1x. And then let's substitute m. m is 3 and 0. It's easy to digest instead of <laughs> substituting 9. So y is 0. And then we get minus 3 plus 1 uh, plus c. We have plus c. I don't know why I'm saying plus 1. We have plus c. This is the constant we're looking for. It uh, should be easy to see here that 
3 is equal to c. 3 is equal to c. So ultimately y is equal to minus x plus 3. Uh, there we go. Let me see if our equation is supposed to be in the form y is equal to. Okay, that's fine. That is uh, 3.2. But we do expect 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3 to be, you know, uh, relatively easy. We don't really expect them to be really difficult. Uh, the questions get difficult when you go to 3.5, 3.6. That's where we expect a little bit of difficulty. But in the first three questions, really, uh, they shouldn't give us any issues. 3.3, calculate the size of theta. So theta is the inclination of QR that is given to us in the information. Do we have the equation to QR? Determine the equation of PM in the form Y is equal to. No, we don't have um, the equation of QR. Let me, let me check. No, we do have the equation of QR. Remember, uh, what we did in 3.1 when i said that we might need this equation so right uh, we know that the gradient is 3 over 2 so the gradient is 3 over 2 this is from 3.1 right so in order to find the inclination therefore of qr tan of theta is equal to the gradient so theta is equal to tan inverse of 3 over 2 that should give us 56.31 so 56.31 degrees oh so there we go 3.3 all right uh two marks so yeah we have eight now which is quite straightforward and nothing difficult really and then 3.4 Show that B is equal to 3 minus A if P and M are linear. P and M are linear. So they are linear if analyzed on the line PM, right? And we have the equation of the line PM minus X plus 3. And then N is part of that line. We are supposed to show that uh, B is equal to 3 minus A. I think the most obvious step the first approach you should try out is to substitute n into the equation of that line because you have been told that p and m are linear p n and m are linear so that, that's the first thing that we must try out maybe it won't work right but it should be the most organic thing should be what comes to mind first so if we substitute these in place of y we have b and then we get minus in place of x we have a and then plus three obviously we can rewrite these as three minus a because addition is commutative order does not really matter so there we go uh, that is actually what you're supposed to show in 3.4 yeah i would be really interested if uh, somebody has solved this question and used a different approach because this seems to be uh, the obvious one so 3.4 another easy one uh, 3.5 maybe something to think about uh, the question says hence determine the value of a and b if n q is equal to 5 square root of 5 okay so n q is equal to 5 square root of 5 and then b is equal to 3 minus a some way somehow supposed to use these two things and be able to find a and b so let's go back to our sketch and look at NQ. So NQ is 5 square root of 5. So we don't have the coordinates of N, obviously that's what we're looking for, but we have the coordinates of Q. So if we use the distance formula, the only unknown variable that we're going to have is A and B, right? Of which they should be easy to solve because we know that B is equal to 3 minus A. Okay, uh, so let's try that and see what happens. So, NQ is equal to the square root of Y2 minus Y1 squared plus X2 minus X1 squared. So, NQ is 5 square root of 5. And this is equal to the square root of Let's take Q as our second point, right? So we get 9 minus 
y right uh, the y coordinate of n the y coordinate of n is b the y coordinate of n is b but we know that b is equals to 3 minus a so why can we not just substitute 3 minus a from the get-go so maybe let me just write this uh, in a better way 9 minus 3 minus a right squared plus 9 minus a and then we square that so if we square both sides we're gonna get 5 multiplied by square root of 5 squared that will be 25 multiplied by 5 which is 125 so 125 is equals to so we get rid of that because we are squared in both sides so now we're just left with 9 minus 3 is 6 6 minus multiplied by minus a so 6 plus a squared plus 9 minus a squared uh, there we go so 125 is equals to 6 multiplied by 6 uh, maybe it's 36 so let's just start let's just write 36 here 36 there right i'm doing that so that i can digest it easily and then 6 multiplied by a is 6a we multiply that by 2 we get 12a and then a multiplied by a that is a squared okay so the, the this is what we have there yeah i'm just writing it in that way so that i can easily digest it and then minus a multiplied by minus a that is a squared and then we're gonna get minus 18 a plus 81 okay so 125 is equals to 2a squared right minus 6a and then 81 plus 36 let's see that is 117 so plus 117 so 2a squared minus 6a and then 117 minus 125 that is minus 8 is equals to 0 so a squared minus 3 minus 4 is equals to 0 so uh, this is quite easy to factorize really we have a a minus 4 plus 1 uh, we have 0 there so a is equals to 4 or a is equals to minus 1 obviously we know that <clears throat> a cannot be equals to 4 because n is on the second quadrant so this cannot be true a is equals to 1 so if a is equals to 1 and b is equals to 3 minus a so we have 3 minus minus 1 b is equals to 4 so uh, there we go uh, the algebra really is not that important uh, this is the part we need to be able to make sense with everything after that is just algebra we're just solving for x right but then the concept is here the concept is here is that step which you should be able to uh, wrap your head around but anyway stories uh, that is 3.5 let's take a look at um, 3.6 determine the equation of a cycle having a center at o determine the equation of a cycle having a center at o okay uh, the origin and passing through point r it is passing through point r so let's find um let's go to our diagram and sort of sketch things and see what is happening so i want to do 3.6 um let me just erase some of this junk so yeah this is the center of the circle at the point o right and then i only have a ruler here i don't have uh, that's a go thing the protractor so that i can draw a circle here so i need to use my free hand I need to use my free hand um, yeah that is horrible but it gets the job done so that is our cycle. That is our cycle. It touches the point R from the origin, right? Um, so we have something. Oh well, let me use blue. We have something like that. Um, does it touch R? Something is said about R. I don't know. Uh, passing through point R. Okay, right. Touches R, and we need an equation for 
uh, that's the um, let me not see obviously rather we have x minus a squared plus y minus b squared being equals to r squared where a and b uh, oh okay yeah this is the general form right we have a and b in our general form yeah but now it's a bit uh, confusing because n has coordinates a and b so i don't know if i should use other variables rather but yeah a and b are the coordinates of the center of your circle i'm not talking about a and b as in the coordinates of n right so the coordinates at the center of the cartesian plane obviously it's zero and zero so we just have x squared plus y squared being equals to r squared so we need r squared and then we are done with the equation of the circle but i'm gonna find r squared we need the coordinates of r but they're not given to us we cannot use the equation of qr it's not going to be helpful because r is not a special pc it's not an x-intercept or y-intercept we have the coordinates of q and we have the coordinates of m m is three and zero and then we know that uh, these distances are equal to each other so we can use the midpoint theorem actually to find the coordinates of r and after finding the coordinates of r we can then substitute them into x uh, we can then substitute x in x and then y in y essentially so let's find the coordinates of r so the x coordinate of m if it's a midpoint of qr should be equals to x of q plus x of r divided by q x of m is 3 x of q is 9 that of r is what you're interested in, in divided by q if we cross multiply, we get 6 being equals to 9 plus x of r. So x of r is equals to minus 3. So there we go. We have x of r. We can obviously go ahead and use the distance, uh, well, the midpoint theorem to find the y value. Or now because we have this x, we can just substitute it in the equation of qr. Uh, but let's just use the midpoint theorem because... The equation of QR is up there. I don't want to go up there anymore. So, Y of M, right? The same concept still applies. Y of M is equals to Y of Q plus Y of R, everything divided by 2. Y of M is 0. Y of Q is 9. Y of R is what we're interested in, divided by 2. Cross multiply, we get 9 plus X, well, not X, but Y y of r being equals to zero y of r is equals to minus nine so the coordinates of r minus three minus nine we can substitute them into x squared plus y squared so we're going to get minus three squared plus minus nine squared being equals to r squared um how much does that give us so 3 squared that is just 9 plus 81 being equals to r squared 90 is equals to r squared so the equation of our cycle x squared plus y squared is equals to 90 that is r squared so there we go that is uh 3.6 uh lastly let's do 3.7 so 3.7 says that the acute angle between the lines qr and the line with equation so this is 3.7 the line with equation y is equals to mx plus 4 is 45 determine the possible values of m the acute angle between the lines qr and the line with the with the equation y is equals to mx plus 4 is 45 okay so let's go back to our diagram and try and make sense of this uh, but looking at the equation here we already know that the y-intercept the y-intercept should have the coordinates 0 and 4 because when you let x be equals to 0 y is 4 here right uh, just provided m is non-zero of which then we don't even have a function so that is the y-intercept uh, so let's go to a diagram uh, let me get rid of this 
uh, we know that uh, B is 4, so that is where we have uh, the y-intercept of that line. It makes an angle of 45 degrees with QR. So let's place it somewhere where it seems you could make an angle of 45. Um, oh, this thing actually gives you an angle. This is a ruler. Okay, so here it's making an angle. Oh, well, let me... Oh, we have a point there. We're supposed to use that point. Here you can see that uh, it makes an angle of 90. Yeah. And then what angle are we looking for? We're looking for 45. Um, okay, I think this thing is uh, using the angle relative to the x-axis. And we're not using uh, the angle relative to the x-axis. Our reference is QR. Okay, so it's not actually going to give us what we're looking for. Okay, okay, <laughs> right. I uh, almost made a mistake there. Uh, but obviously, it cannot be uh, this. Uh, this is about 90, right? Uh, between, let's see, let me just draw the line. Between this line and QR, that's about 90. That's not what we're looking for. But if we go that down that way, it becomes greater than 90, which is what we are not looking for. So it actually needs to not be here, but slightly like this. Then it can give us 45 between uh, the hypothetical line and uh, QR. Yeah, so let's just uh, place our point here for the time being. Yeah, let's say, not our point, but our line. Uh, let me use a uh, lighter. Um, yeah, let's place our line there. Okay, so there we could have a, a point of, we're going to have an angle of 45. But then the question is, uh, possible values. So we need to find a way, another way to sort of, Put this line such that this is still the y-intercept but we have an angle of 45 if we well if we put it somewhere here uh, okay so here our angle of 45 is here that's where our angle of 45 is located yeah you can see that that angle is can be 45 because if we have something like this it would be 90 so that makes sense to be 45 and then I think we, if we put it here also, we can have an angle of 45 degrees. Let's say we place it there. Uh, this angle can be argued to be 45. I think we can both agree that we can agree that this angle can give us 45. Because this gives us 90. So 45, 45, that can give us 45. Right. So now we're looking for the values of... Uh, what are we looking for actually? We're looking for M. We're looking for the gradient. We're looking for the gradient of that line. Uh, such that uh, we have those angles of 45 degrees. So let's start with the uh, last uh, first line that we, we, we began with and sort of make sense of it. So we're talking about QR here. Uh, we have the gradient of QR, um, but we don't know the actual angle. We don't know the actual angle there at QR. Uh, so let's find theta. Oh, did we find theta above? Yes, we did find theta. Theta is 56.31. Yes. So this is uh, 56.31. We have theta. Okay. Uh, let me show you what we are actually going to use here. So this is QR. This is QR. Maybe let me just... I change the color a bit um, to sort of make sense of what is happening while I'm thinking at the same time, really, just buying myself time here. Um, yeah, so we have uh, QR, and then we want to ultimately find um, the angle of inclination of our line, right? Because the angle of inclination of our line is what's actually going to allow us it's what's actually going to allow us to find uh, the gradient of that line at the end of the day. So that is 56.31, and here we have 45. Here we have 45. Uh, let me change the color. Here we have 45, right? So how, how can we use that? Okay, let me draw a line here parallel to the x-axis, right? This is the line. Is parallel to the x-axis so the angle here 
at this point there the angle there is 56.31 why are we seeing that the, the angle there is 56.31 for obvious reason it is 56.31 because now we have these corresponding angles if we measure this entire angle here take a look at this angle from the x-axis or a line that is parallel to the x-axis to our line that you're interested in y is equals to mx plus 4 you should be able to see that uh, the angle of inclination there uh, let me call it what can i call it let me just uh, alpha let me call it alpha the angle of inclination alpha will be equals to 45 plus 56.31 uh, which is equals to 101.31 yeah it becomes easy to see when we draw a line which is parallel to the x-axis right but if you don't draw that line parallel to the x-axis it becomes very difficult to see so alpha can be equals to 101.31 let's go ahead and take a look at that line and try and apply the same idea so let me go back to blue so uh we have our second line we have a sec our second line let's draw again a line parallel to the x-axis so this is a line parallel to the x-axis between the line parallel uh, to the x-axis and and what and our line qr we have an angle of 56.31 so this entire angle here is 56.31 it is the angle between uh, the line parallel to the x-axis and our line qr right so that is 56.31 but take a look at this the angle between uh, focus on the green line and the uh, pink line right this angle here we want it to be 45 but then now we have what we call vertical opposite angles so this angle here is also 45 so what is the angle of inclination between uh, between what we call this uh, between our line y is equal to mx plus 4 and the x-axis right what will be the angle of inclination it should be easy to see that uh, alpha in this case should be equal to 56.31 minus 45 the entire angle is 56.31 we know that this is 45 so that should be 56.31 minus 45 which is equal to 11.31 so we have the two possible angles now we can go and find the possible uh, gradients uh, therefore uh, because the question is saying determine the possible values of m so we'll see uh well m is equal to tan of 101.31 this is equal to 0 0.2 and then m is equal to tan of 11.31 and this is equal to minus 5 there we go